In this video, let's take a look at the select component from Material UI. Select component is used for collecting information from a list of options. Let's understand the component and its props with an example. We're going to begin by creating a new file in the components folder. MUI select.tsx. Within the file, I'm going to create a new component. At the top, I'm going to import the box component from Material UI and use it instead of the div tag. On the box component, I'm going to set width is equal to 250 pixels. For now, all you have to know is that box is just a plain old div tag on which we can specify some CSS properties like height and width. The select dropdown spans the available width and I don't really want it to span the entire browser for our example. Hence, width is equal to 250 pixels. Also, please note, I'm doing this only for the purpose of this tutorial to ensure the UI looks clean. You don't have to add a box component if you don't want to. Now, to make use of the MUI select field, we have two approaches. One, we can reuse the text field component we learned in the previous video, or two, we can use a separate select component which MUI provides. The text field component is a wrapper around three other components of which select is one of them. And since we already have a good understanding of text field, I'm going to continue with that. So at the top, import text field from material UI. Apart from this, a select dropdown also needs options, which will be specified using the menu item component. So import menu item as well. All right, for our example, let's create a dropdown for the user to select a country. So text field and add a label equal to select country and to convert this text field input into a select dropdown, we need to add the select prop. Next, we add the different options in between the opening and closing tags using the menu item component. Let's add menu item. The text is going to be India and the value is going to be IN. I'm going to make two copies of menu item and change the country to USA. The value is going to be US. And finally, Australia, the value being AU. Finally, let's make use of a state variable to handle the value changes. At the top, import use state from React and within the component, create a state variable called country with the initial value being an empty string. On the text field component, we now specify the value prop and this is equal to the country state variable. And on change, we assign a handler called handle change. Let's define this function. Const handle change this is equal to an arrow function. The function receives the event as an argument. So event is of type react dot change event of type HTML input element. Within the function body, we call set country passing in event dot target dot value as string. Finally, let's log the country value to the console to be sure our state variable is tracking it. If we now save the file, include it in app.tsx, comment out MUI text field, and take a look at the browser, you can see we have the select dropdown. 
but the display is not as expected. That is because the width depends on the value. When it is an empty string, the select dropdown is pretty small. Select India and the width increases. Select Australia and the width once again increases. To fix this, one approach is to directly specify a text field width with CSS. The other approach is what I'm going to show you. Since we have a parent with width is equal to 250 pixels, on the text field component, we can specify a prop called full width. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, refresh, and we see we have a 250 pixels wide select dropdown. We see the full select country label. And if I open console, we can see the country value is an empty string. Select India, country is IN, USA, and finally Australia. This is pretty much your basic select dropdown component in Material UI. A variation of the select dropdown is one where you can select multiple options. Let me show you the changes needed to convert a single select dropdown into a multi select dropdown. Step one, we specify the select props prop. Similar to input props we had seen for an input field in the previous video, we are now targeting the select component using the select props. This is an object, and here we set multiple to true. When you do this, the state needs to be converted into an array. Let's make the necessary changes. So const countries, set countries, and the initial value is an empty array. The type of the state variable though, is an array of strings. Next, we console log countries. The setter function is also set countries, value is countries, and the argument to set countries we are going to slightly modify. This will also ensure if the select dropdown value is auto filled, in which case the value is a string rather than an array. So first, const value is equal to event.target.value. And now, while setting countries, we check if value is a string. Now, if this is the case, we're going to split it on a comma and then assign it to countries. If not, we assign the value. If we now take a look at the browser, we have our drop down, and the initial value is an array of zero items. Select India we have array of one. Select USA, we have array of two. And both India as well as USA are displayed in the select component. Select Australia as well. We have India, USA, Australia, and the same logged in the console. The multi-select component works as expected. Now the last thing I want to mention is that the text field properties we had a look at in the previous video continue to work even with a select dropdown. So I can add size is equal to small, color is equal to secondary, and helper text is equal to please select your country, and they all will continue to work as expected. You can toggle the error state using the error prop as well. So error, save, head back to the browser, and we see the red colored outline, as well as the helper text in red color. So some of the props we had a look at in the previous video work for select component as well. Before we wind up this video, I want to mention two points. First, there are variations of the multi-select implementation where the options are checkboxes 
and the display is a list of chips instead of comma separated values. However, we have not come across those individual components yet and as a beginner, they are not necessary. Learn the basics and then focus on improving the user experience. Second, a more practical usage of this component will probably involve fetching the list of drop-down options from an API and populating the list. For that, make use of the map operator, iterate over the array of key value pairs received from the API and render the menu items in the JSX. If you're familiar with list rendering, a quick glance at the docs will help with that scenario. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.